Today's episode is kindly sponsored by Prosperous Universe, a sci-fi game I suspect a few of you might be very interested in. Stick around at the end for more information. Introduced in the early 2270s as a successor to the seminal D7 class, the Katinga class battlecruiser is a rugged and versatile warship that sees little reason to deviate from the incredibly successful design of its predecessor, instead simply building on the strengths of the D7 and reinforcing them with modern technology to create a deadly and highly renowned vessel that would ultimately remain in service for even longer than its venerable forebear. The basic shape of the Katinga dates back as far as the D5 battlecruisers of the mid-22nd century, and the brutalist functionality of this design serves the Katinga just as effectively. The ship stands at a length of 349.54 metres and a width of 251.76 metres, with space on board for a crew of 800 Klingon warriors, supported by flight crews and embarked troops. At launch, the vessel was designed for a cruising speed of warp 5, but consecutive refits across the ship's long career allowed Katinga-class vessels in the 2370s to maintain warp 9.6 for extended periods. The Katinga is armed with six disruptor cannons, each capable of cycling between continuous beam fire and individual energy pulses for high damage at close range. These weapons are supported by one forward and one aft photon torpedo launchers, each loaded with high-power warheads as standard but capable of carrying concussive charges or deployable proximity mines when the situation demands it. The deflector shields of the Katinga class are powerful and provide useful protection for the weaker segments of the ship's space frame, most notably the long structural beam that connects the vessel's primary and secondary hulls. Like almost all Klingon warships, the Katinga class is equipped with a standard issue cloaking device, which uses gravitational bending to conceal the vessel from the visible spectrum and from all but the most sophisticated sensor systems. This utility is useful both for large-scale fleet movements and for advanced tactical manoeuvres, allowing the vessel to ambush an unsuspecting target and deliver a deadly salvo of torpedoes. In addition to this, the reconnaissance applications of a cloaked battlecruiser are naturally extensive, and have often facilitated the popular Klingon pastime of purloining military technology from the Romulan Star Empire and from other powers. By the 2370s, the Katinga class had been somewhat overshadowed by the cutting-edge designs of the Vorcha and Negvar class, as well as the continuing popularity of the Bird of Prey among Klingon commanders. Nevertheless, the ship served valiantly in the Klingon Empire's efforts against the Cardassian Union and later the Dominion filling a useful mid-range attack role, and often overpowering vessels far newer than itself in single combat. Ships of the Katinga class were used as part of the attack on Deep Space Nine in 2372, where they were crucial to quickly penetrating the station's powerful shield generators and deploying masses of Klingon warriors in a coordinated and violent boarding action. The Katinga class finally reached the end of its service life in 2379, almost 11 decades after its commissioning. Having served in dozens of wars and won glory in countless battles, the vessel has more than earned its place in the annals of Klingon folk Law. Small elements of its heritage design would be carried over into the frames of more modern Klingon warships, but in broad strokes, the resignation of the Katinga saw the end of the traditional style of Klingon battlecruisers that had served them so well for centuries. Now superseded by birds of prey, and by smaller numbers of far larger capital ships, the mighty deeds of the Katinga-class battlecruiser persist only in song and story. This week's episode is sponsored by Prosperous Universe, which is a space economic simulator in the same vein as the Egosoft X Games and EVE Online. But unlike those games, it eschews all of that unnecessary 3D space action, which we all know is secretly only there so that we can all pretend that we're well-adjusted normal people playing a normal people game. Prosperous Universe is just brave enough to admit it. I know you're there in my audience, all you people who've spent hundreds of hours building a highly efficient space tofu chain in X3, or driving up the price of fictional asteroid metals in EVE Online. You weirdos are my brothers and sisters, and this game is for you. It's a new avenue for your fix, and it's all funneled through the gorgeous Apex interface. So go and check it out, you'll be supporting Space Dock, and you will find no judgement here. But remember the ninth rule of acquisition, opportunity plus instinct equals profit. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off.
Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.